Oh, hi there. A friend of the family recently asked if I could take these cassettes here and record them to CD. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to share my experience on how I got the audio from these cassettes and then get it recorded onto a CD. So we're going to cover that process today. This is what's next. So when I was tasked by the family friend uh, to get these recordings onto a CD, I opted to use the application called Audacity. Now, in this tutorial, there are many other audio editing apps that are available, but I'm going to use Audacity as it is a free open source application. And depending on the device that you end up purchasing, if you don't have a tape player, it is possible, like in the uh, cassette with the metal flywheels, that it may come with the application itself. Now this is kind of a nondescript CD here, but uh, it does have an older version of Audacity. So I am currently using uh, version 3. I think it's 3.6. Uh, they're currently up to 3.7. It's whatever the most recent one that, that I downloaded about two weeks ago. And I have it installed on this MacBook Pro and I've done the preliminary work on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two setups, two ways that you can get the audio from a cassette into your computer that eventually will end up on a CD. So let's look at the first, more simple setup. All right, for the first simple setup, we're going to use this device that I reviewed about a year ago. It is the JL101 transparent cassette mechanism with the metal flywheels and it does have a USB out connection and that it allows you to do a cassette to MPEG-3. As I stated earlier in the prior segment, this particular device does have the Audacity application so you wouldn't even need to install it off the internet. Once you have the audio cassette, you can use a variety of computers. It could be as simple as this $80 Evolve laptop that I reviewed a long time ago now for this channel. Super low end laptop, but because you're dealing with audio, you should be fine. You could use a more current laptop like this M1 MacBook Pro. You could also use a desktop computer. It doesn't matter. And then you're going to need some sort of device to create the CD. In this case, I have an Apple SuperDrive. There are knockoffs that you can purchase off of Amazon, or you could even have a more sophisticated player like this Blu-ray disc recorder from LG. Let's look at a more sophisticated or complicated setup. Here we have my Fisher dual cassette player. The advantage to this over, let's say the easier solution, which would be this, is probably audio quality. The heads in older units will have a better frequency range overall, plus the gears and the mechanisms will probably be a little bit better than something like this. So if you are looking for higher quality transfers into digital from analog cassettes, this might be a better way to go. Not this particular unit, obviously there are far better dual cassettes than this one, but this would be the type of tape deck you'd want to use in that instance. Again, a major difference between the simple setup and then this setup is that this one has a USB-C connection, we've already talked about that. This, you're gonna have your RCA connections, which is gonna require an item like this. This is from Behringer, and it allows you to do either line level or phono level. But on the other end, there is your USB connection. So you would have to connect the RCAs up and then plug this into the computer. In the rest of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the easier solution. Now, for the family friend, I've actually used this solution connecting up the RCAs. If you're interested in knowing more about how that would get hooked up, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll continue with this tape deck. 
All right, currently have our laptop set up, so we're ready to go there. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make certain that we get the cassette mechanism connected up. We're going to use the USB-C ports on the side of this M1 MacBook Pro. This is the connection that goes into the device, which has a USB-C connection right there. And because this has a USB-A on the other side, I'm using an adapter to allow me to plug in to the side like that. The next step, open up Audacity. So I'm gonna go into my recent items and select Audacity. Now with our cassette mechanism plugged into the laptop, let's make some adjustment settings in the Audacity application. First item is we want our playback device is currently the MacBook Pro speakers. If you have external speakers, you could play through that way. Recording device is set to the USB PNP audio device, which is the cassette mechanism. You also want to make certain that you're recording in either mono or stereo, depending on the cassette that you're bringing in or any audio device that you're bringing in. But last but not least, we have to go to preferences and go to recording. And we want to make certain that our audible input monitoring is checked. That way we can listen to the audio as it's being played from the cassette or audio source while it's being recorded from the device that we've selected as a playback device. So now with everything configured and set up, it is now time to go ahead and start recording. So I'm gonna first press play on the cassette and click the big red record button right here. And with that, we're starting to record. And we are getting audio playing through. But in this example, we're just gonna do the first two. I'm gonna let this play out. We'll come back in just a moment. All right, we've reached the last song. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. And we have our finished recording. We have two tracks, one here and one here. So we need to do a couple steps before we export this music so we can create the CD. Now, I could just export the track as it is now, but we wanna kind of recreate the track layout that was on the audio cassette. So the first item that I wanna do is actually split these two tracks. And before I do that, I'm gonna zoom in and make certain that my cursor is basically where it needs to be, which we're gonna put it right here. We're gonna do Command-I or Control-I on Windows, but on a Mac, Command-I, and now I split the track. The next step is to label these tracks. It's gonna make the exporting of the music in the individual tracks a little bit easier for us. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select the first audio track. And in this case, I'm going to, because I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna do Command B, but you can also do Control B on Windows. And what that's gonna do is it's going to add a label track. And currently right now, we have this little text field that I'm going to enter 01, dash track one, okay? Next, we're going to use option period on the Mac or alt period on a PC, and we skip to the next audio track. We're gonna do the same thing, command B, and in this case, we're going to type out 02, track two. So now our single audio file is now divided into two sections with two labels. The next step is to export it. What we're gonna do is go to File and Export Audio. In the newer version of Audacity, it's gonna ask if you wanna save it to audio.com or to your computer. In my case, we're going to do computer. The next step is to make certain that our sample rate is at 44.1, that's what CDs are at. It's in stereo, we have it at 16-bit. We're gonna do multiple files, and this is gonna save us a ton of time using Audacity. We're gonna use the labels, but we're also using the label track name as we do the export. And you're gonna understand why I added an 01 and an 02. That way it just lists the tracks in the proper order. Let's go to export. We have our two tracks are already set up. If we happen to minimize this, go to test, and there are our two tracks. So we are now ready to go and create our CD. 
we're using an older version of Toast. I think they're up to version 20, 21, but this is version 19. It hasn't changed drastically, and most other CD burning software is going to be very similar. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, brighten up my screen a little bit, the burn option right here. And I want to go to audio CD. So we're going to select that. We could drag the audio in. I'm going to go ahead and drag those two tracks in. So by selecting those and then click and drag the two items in and drop them. Now what we want to do is we have the CD here that we're going to record on. This is the CD player. You saw that earlier. I'm going to come around the camera here and we're going to enter the CD into the mechanism itself. And we're going to let it spin up. We're going to go ahead and click burn. So now we're burning the CD and we're just going to let it complete the task. Uh, there is a warning that goes along here that says make certain the system does not go to sleep and you definitely don't want to do that. That could ruin the disc and then you're going to have to start all over again. Highly recommend that you actually plug this into a power outlet. That is probably the best thing. And if you can, go ahead and set your laptop to not go to sleep during this process. So right now we're writing the lead in and we're gonna come back here and we're gonna test out the CD. All right, it just took a few moments to record it. We can go ahead and mount it. It's bringing up uh, music and there are our tracks. So let's go ahead and we're gonna play the first one. It's spinning up and there we go. We are playing the music from the cassette. It has now been burned onto CD. What does the sound quality sound like? Let's do just a basic feed for you uh, and compare the two decks between the cassette here, this mechanism, and that dual cassette. All right, so that was kind of a fun little project here. I hope you found it enjoyable. Let me go send it back to the studios for my final thoughts. You know, this has been a fun project. Not only am I glad to help the friend of the family with the uh, transfer of the audio tape, but I'm also grateful that I got to share this process with you. And it's always nice to find uses for past reviewed products like this tape deck. Another reason for today's show, was to take all of the different bits of information I needed to create the CD and combine it into one, one simple video. If anything, I no longer need to remember where I searched to find this information again. I can just watch this video. Well, that's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you for watching. If you like today's content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And to stay current on future episodes, click the subscribe and bell notification icons. Feel free to watch one of my other videos either here or here. And until next time, I'll see you again for another episode of Hey, What's Next?